In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, peace be upon you. Apologies, I speak slowly to speed up this video. Click on settings, bottom right of this screen, then click on speed and select a suitable speed. Who are better, the Shiites, the Sunnis, the Alawites, the Wahhabis? Which one? Now, when I was young, there were only a few masjids in Yorkshire where I was born and I only went to a masjid once. At that time they were mixed and um, as a boy um, went past me to go to the front um, and speak to the um, teacher, he nipped me so I refused to ever go again and my parents didn't pressure me. Um, most of my religious knowledge um, up to the age of 16 or 10, let's say, was from my Church of England primary school. Um, my mum was hoping to teach me Arabic after I mastered Urdu, um, which she taught me up to the age of 10. God bless her. Um, but pertaining to religion, she only taught me three things be shortly before she passed away or whatever happened, happened to her. Um, she explained to me that Muslims believe Jesus is the prophet of God. Um, she taught me that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, nursed an old lady who used to throw rubbish on him. And that is the example that Muslims should follow. And she also told me that Muhammad وسلم's people used to dislike baby girls and they would bury them alive until the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received his revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and told his followers to stop this evil act. Um, be besides these three points, I knew very little uh, about Islam and sometimes I felt that non-Muslim girls at school knew more about my faith than I did. Um, sometimes we'd, they'd say, oh, you're lucky you have two Christmases and I'd think, do I? <laughs> but uh, now um, I always wanted to read uh, the oldest scriptures that I could find uh, and learn about the truth um, and I also wanted to hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the words of God um, so I was having a discussion about this with my sister when I was about 15-16 she was a couple of years younger and she replied Muslims believe the Quran is the word of God and I was shocked I was shocked that uh, this is what they believe and that I must get myself a copy of the Quran if this is what they believe I must hear the direct words of God and so I did get a copy of the translation of the Quran and um, I read the Quran and it made perfect sense to me as someone who was interested in the sciences it, it confirmed the miracles the scientific miracles all around me and I completely accepted that the Quran was the word of God. Um, 
And I sometimes I would read passages and question Allah about those passages. Why had he said this? Why had he said that? And um, in my life experiences, he would teach me why he said this, that and the other. And um, I, I still find time to read the Quran because it is I, I truly believe that it builds your intelligence when you read it and you ask questions about it things that perhaps you might not agree with and you ask those questions from God and then he guides you to the understanding behind it it is amazing now, after my mum's death, I was about 11, I moved in eventually with my uncle and auntie uh, and my uh, brothers and sisters um, joined me. I had been informed at some stage that I was a Sunni Muslim um, after moving in with my uncles, but um, when I was 16 and I read the Quran, it told me something different. And I'm going to quote the verse from the Quran, chapter 6, verse 159. As for those who divide their religion and break up into sects, thou hast no part in them in the least. Their affair is with Allah. He will in the end tell them the truth of all that they did. So Allah is instructing the Prophet, peace be upon him, not to take part with those people who divide their religion up into sects and I felt that Allah was telling that to me as well um, because of the direct speech sense that you get within the Quran uh, and it was easy for me to shake off this Sun Sunni identity um, and reject it because I had to be an independent thinker uh, to survive in my uncle's family. The women in the family tended to believe in God, while the men did not believe in God. And uh, I would have discussions with the men about this because I was younger. I would listen to what they said, but ultimately make my own mind up about what I believed. Um, so I was already going against the grain, um, not accepting my uncle's ideas and thinking independently. So I don't believe I was mind controlled to be a Muslim. And it was easy um, for me to evaluate information and dis make my own mind up about whether I was going to accept the information or not. Um, further, um, according to the Quran, there's only one type of Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. And I'm going to uh, quote uh, different verses from uh, three different chapters so verse 135 from chapter 2 they say become Jews or Christians if ye would be guided to salvation say thou nay I would rather the religion of Abraham the true and it, it's given the interpretation of the true and that's Hanifan and he joined not God with Allah. Um, in chapter 3, verse 67, it says, Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but a Hanif, a Muslim, one who is not among the idol worshippers. Chapter 3, verse 95, say, Allah speaketh the truth, follow the religion of Abraham, Hanifan, the same in faith he was not of the pagans and chapter 4 verse 125 who can be better in religion than one who sub submits his whole self to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
does good and follows the way of Abraham, the true in faith. For Allah did take Abraham for a friend. So um, I'm also looking at um, a, a dictionary of boys' names. And the word Hanif means someone who is monotheist, uh, who believes in the oneness of Allah and is a devout believer. So in the Quran translations, it's talked about it being someone who's true in faith, a true believer, um, a righteous believer. Okay, they are all part of the faith that is accepted by Allah. Um, also, um, during my experience in 2000, I dreamt someone asked me which sect I belong to. And in the dream I answered, I believe in the Quran being the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe in his prophets, his angels, and I am just a Muslim. I belong to no sect. Uh, a week later in real, real life, I was in an Islamic bookshop and a man approached me. We talked about the Quran that I was holding and he asked me what sect I be belonged to and I actually answered him exactly as I am because I remembered the dream and answered in that way because I felt that was the right way to answer him. I have absolutely no idea who the man was. I've never seen him ever again. And I, I don't know what impact that statement would have had on his life, why I would have dreamed about this stranger perhaps before I met him or or the significance of any of that. Um, and I, because after 2008, my second experience, I felt the right thing to do was learn more about Islam and uh, complete an Alima course. Um, so in 2009, I started the course, but the teachers who were younger than me were annoying me. They would ask me to tell them what sect I chose to belong to. And apparently I had to choose a sect. And if I chose whichever scholar I was going to go with, um, I had to adopt his rulings in everything. But I don't like to adopt the rulings of one scholar or another. No, because I might like an idea from one scholar and not like another idea from him, but I prefer an idea from a different scholar. So no, um, I wasn't prepared to do that. I'd refuse, I'd quote from the Quran that this sectarianism is wrong. Um, and once when I told them that they were opposing the Quran, I do recall one of them saying to me that it was okay to go against the Quran if the disciples or the Sahaba of Muhammad wasallam agreed this should be done in a particular situation. To me, that was horrific. What she was teaching was horrific and shook me because that actually I find terrifying to say it's okay to go against the Quran um, because you're choosing to go against the word of Allah and you're teaching this to other people. So I, I stopped attending the classes. It wasn't just this issue that uh, bothered me. It was other things that I believed they were teaching incorrectly. Um, 
After gaining further life experience, I found out how um, disbelievers cause believers to fight and kill each other um, using a divide and conquer tactic. Um, and the brainwashed so-called believers would be fighting each other, Sunni versus Alawite or Sunni versus Shiite. And it, it's all about a hunger for power. There's people within the groups who have a hunger for power. So they will agree to fighting other believers because they don't really have true belief and they hunger for power the non-believers of the West give them funding and money to gain power so they will fight each other for the power but I believe power is with Allah and he gives it to whoever he chooses and you don't need to fight and kill. You just need to be of true belief. Um, I'd also like to add at this point that um, the British Raj, Gog and Magog Raj of the West did use divide and conquer tactics in India um, dividing the Muslims and Hindus and causing us to clash with each other while they stole all the resources so as I said the Gog and Magog anti-Christian satanic Hanzir get richer and richer and stealing our resources while we're fighting each other. So you need to turn your head towards the most evil people in, in the world and deal with them. Deal with those that are stealing your resources behind your backs, who are gaining power over you while you're busy fighting each other. They're paying mercenaries to destroy your lands, to kill your cattle and people. They are the mischief makers, but say they've come in peace. And they're discussed in the Quran. These mischief makers, Allah highlights them, that they say that they've come in peace. And really, their aim is to destroy crops and cattle and people uh, and Allah actually quotes says that in the Quran about them and um, I'd like us all to remember Muntaza al Zaidi. what an amazing person he threw his shoes at Bush uh, and that is what Western politicians and bankers and big businessmen deserve. They shouldn't be allowed to walk in the street without a shoe being flung at them. After all, they're trying to um, control us, uh, bring in more rulings to imprison the people let them become imprisoned themselves so I pray that Allah guides us protects us and gives us peace may Allah guide the Satanist Antichrist and the devil to the straight path may the ultimate success be that all creation unite for truth and justice and may humans realize they are not wiser than Allah Again, I pray for guidance and forgiveness. I pray that the children be a source of peace for parents and the peace, the parents be a source of peace for children and that Allah make me a source of peace for all and may I achieve martyrdom by defending the vulnerable. Allahu Akbar and Allah Hafiz.